Welcome to Genetic Science Center Gulbarga. Today we are going to show you some simple experiments which you can do it in your home. Uh, many materials are not required, low cost, no cost material or the materials which are available around us can be used for making several experiments. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited and imagination encircles the world is the statement or quotation given by the Albert Einstein. So for doing any experiment, we always we need not think we really should go to the laboratory. Whatever is available around us that we have to think. So that's why imagination is more important. We have been studying many things in our syllabus and knowledge we have acquired. But how to do the experiment that is more important. So that's why we, have, we can also remember one more scientist that is our famous Indian scientist uh, C.V. Raman. He used to say, the essence of science is independent thinking and hard work, but not the sophisticated equipment or laboratory. So, laboratory is not more important, but what we think essence of science is independent thinking that is more important. So, he, he always used to say, the great advancements in the knowledge came through questioning the orthodox view. So, we should not say, somebody say if it is because of uh, some uh, uh, phenomenon or somebody is telling maybe our parents are telling you don't do that, don't do this and all. Why we should not do? Because in the science, what is more important is what, when, how, why. So that questioning attitude should develop so that our creative mind also will develop. So in uh, when we talk about creative mind, we can also think about uh, Thomas Alva Edison, one of the most uh, uh, creative person and also the inventor of the uh, world. He used to say genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So, hard work, that perspiration is more important. Maybe sometimes you will be getting inspiration by your teacher or maybe some your parents or somebody who come across in your life, they will inspire you in one or the other way. But in order to uh, be a great person or genius person, you have to work hard. So, this is uh, some of the thoughts which are related to science. Now, let us go and see what experiment we are going to do. So, here we are going to do one simple experiment which we can also do in our home. Maybe you can also take the glass or any cylinder which is available in your home. So, this is one cylinder which is containing actually the water. In that, we have to put little maybe phenolphthalein. If the phenolphthalein is not there in your home, you can also put little turmeric powder into that. So that uh, what color change is going to occur later when we are adding some chemical that you can see. Now here in my hand, so there are, or maybe you can also take in the spatula. So this is actually the sodium metal which I, I, I normally normally we are keeping uh, in the uh, kerosene because it is highly reactive, it absorbs atmospheric humidity. Now I am going to put that in this. Uh, Solution. Let us see what is going to happen. Now, as soon as I put that inside, so here you see the color change and also explosion you have seen. While exploding, you have also seen uh, actually uh, fire because in this chemical reaction, what is actually happening is here I said with water is there in that I have added phenolphthalein and uh, when I put sodium here, what is happening is sodium is reacting with the water. It will become sodium hydroxide and hydrogen is also liberated because fumes we have seen and uh, hydrogen which is liberated out, uh, it catches fire because this is an exothermic reaction. So that is why you have seen the color change because it, it is going to become base, sodium hydroxide is a base, phenolphthalein actually it is giving pink color in the basic medium. So that is what we have seen in this experiment. So, uh, let us see what we have to do later with this uh, solution. So, at the end of the uh, uh, demonstration, we will see uh, the, uh, we have to make the colorless solution of this. So, this is one of the important experiment exothermic reaction. Now, let us see another experiment which is uh, actually centrifugal reaction. In our day to day life, in different way, we are experiencing, experiencing the centrifugal reaction. And when we are rotating any ball, suppose if you are going to a, maybe any meda and all, so you will be getting a uh, toy like this. This toy 
which has got elastic thread and this ball sometimes uh, you are also seeing uh, the line when you are rotating this has got definite length now suppose if i rotate this let us see what is going to happen so length of that is increasing so earlier what was there that length was less now when you are rotating the length of that increases instead of me pulling this away from the point of holding that is the center when it's, uh, it is making circle now when i rotate uh, because of the centrifugal force the length increases now if i pull also length increases but instead of that when we rotate the length of that is increasing this is the centrifugal force in action all the particles or the body which are moving in a straight line however maybe the speed or the velocity we cannot feel the centrifugal reaction but whenever there is some curvature or circle there at that point of time we are experiencing the centrifugal reaction whenever we are going in the cycle or maybe in the motorbike when you are uh, turning maybe in any of the circle then you are going to experience it so this can be understood with so simple experiment you can also experience the same with the help of maybe water which is there in this uh, actually uh, here water is there in this uh, uh, glass now i have also kept actually one uh, ball here over that let us see when we rotate this what is going to happen so here once again i will show there is normal water and now i am going to rotate this ball as well as water which is there in the tumbler is not falling down even though this is upside down when it is rotating the water is not falling down because the centrifugal force is acting on the surface of the motor and also on the ball that's why the water which is in the container or the tumbler that will be pushed towards the walls of the container that's why this water is not falling down you can also do that experiment with the help of maybe bucket in the bucket also you try put some water maybe toilet paper small bucket you can take or you can make a simple setup like this so this is how the centrifugal reaction is acting so like that many different things we can take and study about the centrifugal reaction now let us see one more experiment using plastic bottle so this is a plastic bottle and i have water here but i am taking that water in this plastic bottle and uh, after filling it with water let us uh, cover the mouth with the cap which is there here but we have made some fun oil out of it because this water which is there in the bottle it has to obey my order what i am going to do is now i am closing i will say stop and go then the water will be coming out let us see so here you see this water bottle you are seeing now if i say go water is coming out here you can see if i say stop water will stop so go and stop we have to use so go everybody's order it will obey not only my order it will obey the order of everybody so you have to do that properly so that you can show water is stopping or flowing for this what we have done is at the top of this cap there is a small hole and at the bottom of this there is a orifice in that orifice water will loop over, uh, lose out or leak out only atmosphere pressure is acting on the surface of the water in order to act the atmosphere pressure what we have to do is so we have to open the uh, mouth or we have to Uh, release uh, the uh, air into it through the orifice so that when i open it here at the top water goes out go and stop like that you can make fun of this okay so it obeys everybody's order so this is actually the atmosphere pressure only with the atmosphere pressure it is possible for the air to leak like that if you make many holes also you can make the shower of water so that it will come out when i release it okay so this is one important uh, thing which you can show with the help of water bottle many such things also can be done with the help of the water bottle 
Now uh, let us see an, another experiment that is called as persistence of vision. Whatever we see around us, the image of that actually falls on the retina of our eye. A retina has got the capacity to withhold the image for about 0.1 second or 1 by 10th of the second. Within that period, if more and more images are falling on the eye, our brain persists it as the single image. So that's why whenever we are seeing maybe a train moving, when we are standing on the platform and watching the train, we feel that uh, it is continuously uh, moving in a faster rate. We cannot make out who is sitting inside. The, in the similar way, now we are going to take uh, one case and also a bird. So let us rotate this and see what is going to happen. So bird is going into the cage whenever I rotate it. The image of the bird and also the cage, so that is going into the retina and from the retina the optical nerve takes the image to the brain, visual area of the brain. So then we perceive that this as a single image. So you can also take any other thing, maybe fish in a uh, maybe uh, glass or maybe here squirrel also you can take uh, different things you can image, you can make and see what is going to happen. So this is the persist uh, persistence of the vision and uh, this also is uh, applied in the uh, film earlier that 60 mm film or 30 mm film or 8 mm film which we are running, there were different frames, they were moving uh, continuously because of that we used to see the action. So if the more and more images are pausing, we used to see the running effect or maybe uh, in, uh, the hero uh, or heroine when they are maybe singing and all that slow motion also we can create depending upon the number of frames which are moving. So this is uh, persistence of vision that experiment we have seen now. Now let us see some equipment related to the vibration. Vibration is everywhere, uh, whether it is in uh, atomic level or molecular level or any body will be there in the vibration condition. Now, uh, this balloon, when I am speaking here, in, I am uh, uh, keeping the balloon uh, in front of the mouth. And you can also do like that, what we can experience. Actually, we can feel the vibration of the balloon as well as the particles, because of the particles which are vibrating inside that, we are seeing more uh, amplified vibration, you cannot see, you can experience. So, uh, uh, whenever we are holding maybe newspaper and uh, say loudly hello, 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 so that we can also experience vibration of the paper. So, that vibration exists in our daily life in different way, maybe this is one example. So, I am vibrating that we can see the particles or this uh, 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 hexa blade is moving and if you are changing the length of that you will be seeing or hearing the sound in different way. So length I am reducing, sound is also different. So when the length is less and frequency will be more. So that's what you can see here. And uh, this uh, I am also taking one ball in here which is tied. So vibration and also oscillation, they are interrelated, okay. Now here there is a ball, so this ball, if I uh, release it, after some time it, come, it will come back to the normal position or equilibrium position. From the, uh, this equilibrium position, it will go to a, a location called maybe A or to the location B, in between there is 0 or uh, O or neutralized point. Like this, this vibration will be there, whether it is the hexa frame which I have shown or any particle which are moving, they will have such kind of movement that the vibration exists everywhere. Now, this balloon, what I am going to do is, I will slowly release the air, which is there in that, because of that it is actually making the sound. Maybe children to experience this, in the day to day we have done this, so you can also see the difference of sound when it is uh, reducing in the size. And now we are also showing one more thing, maybe using straw we can make a different kind of sound. Now what you have to do is, you have to take straw and we have to cut the wedge actually in this V shape at the end of the straw if I cut. 
and we are, we let us try to blow air into this so we are here in sound now i will blow another straw now let me cut the length of this whether when i cut this length we is there any variation in the sound let us see now one more i will take let me see what is going to happen with this let use this straw and let me push that inside a cone let us see what is going to happen so i will insert it inside uh, uh, this uh, pipe uh, uh, the cone which is made here and i am uh, blowing again let us see whether the amplitude will increase or not so this toy normally you will be getting it in any of the mela where you are going so so easily you can also make in your home so this is uh, air is there inside this whatever the vibration is created that will also vibrate the air particle which are there inside that that's why whenever sometimes we, if you are not hearing properly what we do is we will keep our hand near our eyes so that air column you are increasing so that if somebody is speaking very slowly and we can hear that so this is what the vibration is existing everywhere and uh, we can also see the wave pattern here this is the wave pattern because i used the electric thread here so you can see nodes and anti nodes in this so this such vibration you can also generate maybe using different the material maybe so i am using this thread so you can see the standing waves in this so here we are seeing at one location or at the center so you are seeing more amplitude at at as it goes from the center to end the amplitude is reducing so like that you are seeing nodes and anti nodes in this so vibration has got different maybe period of oscillation and all i am not going to explain that you will be studying in the syllabus but what is my intention is you have to do more and more experiments so now what i am going to show is so using this slinky or a spring which also you will get in any of the mela now i am holding that one end and from the other end i will give a little jerk so let us see what is going to happen so here when i give jerk that jerk moves from one end to the other end there we are seeing contraction and rarefaction the sound waves also move in the same way when i speak the air particles which are near my mouth they compress and move forward so like that continuously that movement will be there contraction and rarefaction continues so that to a far away distance also we can hear the sound because of continuous vibration which is moving but it is damping after some time because of the uh, atmospheric uh, particles like this pendulum after some time it is stopping down when we oscillate so this is uh, the damping oscillation oscillation will not remain forever but all the particles in the stationary also they will have the natural frequency of vibration if you are generating some kind of frequency by some other means they start vibrating or you have to give some force that is called as forced oscillation yes now you see here two balloons they are inflated and i am holding it uh, let us uh, let me blow air in between let us see what is going to happen whenever i blow air these two balloons are coming very close but normal uh, perception is that whenever we apply force in between the ball should move away like that it is the general perception but when i blow air what is happening is it moves in greater velocity when velocity increases pressure decreases 
than that of the atmosphere pressure. So all around us is atmosphere pressure. But when I blow air in between, at this location, pressure will be little less than that of the atmosphere pressure. So that what happens, all the particles of the atmosphere, atmosphere they move and push this balloon towards the center where there is low pressure. So that's why the balloon is coming and attaching together. Now the same experiment, let us see with another uh, uh, small setup. So this is uh, uh, colored water which is there in the glass. I am having two straw. One is uh, shorter and one is longer. Now I am keeping one of the straw inside this. And I will grow air to the end of this. But these two should be perpendicular. Otherwise it will not work. So now what I will do is. I will just blow air here. Let us see what is going to happen. This water which I have blown, or colored water which I have blown, that is also coming here and falling on this. You are seeing some right up there. If the angle is same, correct right angle, the continuously air, air which is coming out, it will create low pressure at this end so that water rises up because atmospheric pressure is acting on the surface of the water. It pushes the water into the straw so that from the straw the air or the, the air and water together coming up that is it is sprayed, atomized. So that's what is actually, actually happening in the sprayers, what we are using, maybe body sprayer or nylon sprayer or maybe heat and all when we are using, that's what is going to happen. Let us see another experiment with once again low cost, low cost things only. So actually we know all the bodies which you are throwing or uh, leaving uh, from a certain height, they will come back or if I throw maybe a uh, piece of paper by making it in the form of ball and if I throw definitely it will come down. So if any particle has to uh, maybe go away from the gravitational pull, we have to give sufficient velocity that is called as actually uh, escape velocity. So now we are not talking about the escape velocity, we are talking about the acceleration due to gravity. Our earth as well as any body which is there on the earth, they have their own mass and also there is weight. And depending upon the weight of the body, there will be the gra uh, gravitational pull. Because Newton's uh, universal law of gravitation tells that there is gravity for every body, but it depends upon the mass of the body or weight of the body. Okay. Now, uh, what is uh, weight? W is equal to m into g. g is say, but mass will be different. Different mass we are going to take and we are going to drop them simultaneously from the same height. Let us start with maybe one piece of paper. So I have a paper. Uh, this is actually matter in terms of maybe science if you are telling. So this is matter. Matter is there in this. And since this paper is uniform in thickness and it will have same weight in any piece if you are going to make. So now I have made two pieces here, so equal width and also the length. So that some, 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 some area will be there, maybe 4 by 6 or 3 by 6 square inch if you are telling. So it has got this. Now if I drop these two simultaneously from the same height. Now I am dropping here. Let us see what is going to happen, whether the paper in the right hand uh, falls or reaches the table first or the left hand piece reaches the first. Now if I do it again and again. We can't say which paper is going to reach and after reaching only we will be seeing that whether you are keeping the paper in this way or in this way, whatever the way, they reach in different time. Because the atmosphere pressure is there, the air particles which are there around us, they actually uh, in motion. Now, if there may be, there may be a, a best of student or intelligent boy in the class, if I say him, so uh, only the paper which is there in the right hand should reach the uh, table first means he may do like this. He will be continuously floating on 
uh, folding it continuously so that surface area is going to reduce. Now or you can also make that in the form of ball. That means you have now let us crush this paper in this and we will make uh, into the ball and let us drop these two simultaneously. Now always the paper which is there in the right hand side reaches the table first. Why it is so? Because surface area which is there for this is more so that up thrust is more for this surface area is less comparatively maybe one tenth of this maybe so that the up thrust of the, the air will be reducing so because of that even though the mass is same this is reaching the ground simultaneously suppose if you do that in the vacuum then definitely both of them will reach the ground first because air pressure should not be there now let us take uh, here two balls here maybe one small maybe marble and one big marble if I drop these two simultaneously if they reach the table together then I think we should get only one sound let us only one sound is coming so that means they are reaching simultaneously so irrespective of the mass they all the bodies they reach the ground simultaneously. Suppose maybe on the tree there may be mango of different size and if they come down together, so then what happens? Both of them will reach the ground simultaneously if they start at the same time. Similarly, all maybe sticks or leaves or whatever is there that they are going to come like that. If there is uh, air pressure or wind and all this uh, maybe leaves and all they come in the whirling fashion and all depending upon the type of the air movement. So like this different thing you can take maybe a stone you can take maybe or uh, bricks you can take or wooden piece like that you can try in your home. Any kind of material you can take and try in your home so that you can uh, feel that all the bodies they reach the ground simultaneously if there is uh, air pressure application is phenomenally less that means if it is flat then uh, the air pressure is more if it is maybe in the shape of ball or maybe round and all they definitely reach the ground simultaneously so g is same for all bodies this is what we have learned with this experiment so let us see another experiment now I have taken water in a mineral water bottle and uh, yeah, this cap also we need actually. Now I, we know that uh, the liquid which is there in any container it exerts pressure on the walls of the container. So if there is a hole we know the water is going out if uh, this mouth is kept open it will go out. Now what I am going to do is I have taken one straw. So recently we have tested this instead of using ink filler. So we have made this arrangement. So this end is closed. I am going to keep that here. So this is uh, setup is for the Cartesian diver experiment. So let us see what is going to happen here. In this actually we have taken ink filler. Ink filler is there at the top. And here this uh, straw is there at the top in vertical position. Now let us press and see what is going to happen. Now one by one I will press. So it goes down and if I release it comes up. Similarly I will also press this. It goes down. If I release it will come up. So that means when I apply pressure to the bottle. That pressure is transmitted through all the water particles. And finally it goes to the straw which is there inside in that more water will be stored so that weight of the straw increases so then after what is acting on the straw will be little bit lesser compared to the earlier so that it sinks down so now in the same thing it is also happening so liquid pressure when we are applying the pressure so then more water goes inside the straw that actually you can feel when you are doing in the home the water level increases in the straw and similarly water level increases in the uh, ink filler so that upthrust which is normally applied uh, to the uh, straw or maybe uh, to the ink filler so that will be changing 
So this is actually the law of buoyancy which you can actually experience here by in this experiment. So this is Cartesian diver and the application of that is what submarine. In the submarine also what is going to happen is if more water is stored within the submarine the weight of that increases and goes down and if the driver or maybe operator releases the water to the sea then what happens inside that weight is going to reduce then it will come up. So this is a, a very simple experiment which you can also try in your home. You need not purchase anything but I kept one coin and uh, this is glass. Now if I pull slowly this coin is coming along with me on the paper it stays there only. So that we are seeing I applied force but this coin is also moving. So let me apply force uh, in a faster rate. Let us see what is going to happen. This coin falls inside. So if I keep maybe one more coin and pull in a faster rate then also the coin moves inside. That means when I pull it in a faster rate or push on the other side also you can try. What happens? Applied force will not be transmitted to this coin or the other coin or any material which you are keeping on that. So now if I keep two coins together let us try what is going to happen. This is only one trial. So both of them are also moving down. So like that you can try in different way. This is either sharp red, any body or with this coin want to be there in the resting position. So when I apply greater force or when I push it in a faster rate only this paper is coming back because applied force is not transmitted to the coin which is there. So that is why it falls within the glass. So this is one simple experiment. Next let us see another experiment now. Now you can see the setup here. What we have done is we have taken once again water in a plastic bottle. So here I have put one straw, bent straw which goes to the bottom. So this uh, uh, hole where you have made, no, that is sealed because air is not entering from any other part. Okay. And to the mouth of that we have uh, put one, fixed one inflated balloon. Now I will release this balloon. Let us see what is happening. Yes, water is uh, coming out because air pressure or atmosphere pressure is acting on the balloon. Balloon has got the elasticity because of that it sinks down and water from the bottom is coming out and it is coming out as a siphon. So get the water you can see there. So this is simple experiment which you can also try in your boat. If the air pressure is reduced, water will not come. Once again I will release. So it will come out like this. Now let us also go for another experiment. So let, let us keep this here only and I will fill water in this uh, one more setup. Here what is the setup? There is one straw which is bent inside and we have put a tape also to keep that in the bent position. This is a plastic bottle and half cut. So this setup is easy to see. Let us see what is going to happen. I will fill water inside this. Okay. Some more water also I will fill. Okay. This is actually called as Pythagoras cup. So let us see what is going to happen. Even though this is bent and it is there to the bottom level. Now if I release this uh, straw, water is coming down because air pressure is acting on the surface of the water. It pushes the water down. Even in the bent position also, what happens? Even below that bent level, when water goes down there, it is also coming up, up to the bottom. So, where this end of the straw touches to the water up to that level it goes even though it is bent so bent in the bent level also so water it is coming out so that's what we have seen this is uh, actually the Pythagoras cup so and uh, it should be airtight we have to fix it properly 
now this arrangement is for water to come out when i invert this water will be coming out and air should be filled in to the uh, emptied space that air will go through another pipe which is connected to the balloon let us see what is going to happen so balloon inflates when water is coming out balloon inflates if you hold it for a longer duration that balloon inflates more as well as this water also crushes down so this is once again the atmospheric pressure so water is coming out and in order to create the vacuum uh, fill the vacuum created the balloon inflates so now let us see one more experiment which is there once again in the syllabus in the many of the textbooks this is given we have to take one water bottle what we have to do is we have to fill water in this and it has got three holes here now let me try filling it and i have to see what is going to happen when the totally it is filled up here you can see the bottom water is falling for a longer distance middle shorter distance top still shorter distance because liquid liquid pressure increases with the depth of the liquid column so here it goes to a longer distance at the bottom let little less and top it is still lesser so this is actually i will explain it once again by removing water what is going to happen is the air column when the depth increases the pressure increases because weight of all the water molecules which are there at the top it falls on the next layer and next layer middle layer and bottom layer totally at bottom so more weight will be there that's why the water is going to be for a longer distance at the bottom and lesser in between and too less at the top hole so that's why when the dam and door is constructed bottom wall should be thicker because there will be more pressure in order to withhold the pressure the bottom must be thicker so this we can understand so here the concept simple concept is pressure increase with the depth now if the depth is same suppose uh, at this level all around if you are making hole then to the same distance water will come out you can that also try at the bottom you uh, maybe at one inch height you will make some eight hole at the same height so that when you release what will go to the same distance because liquid pressure at the given height is same like that you can also try try in different level you have to make several holes and try so water not only from this hole all around at the same height if it is coming out then it will be going to the same distance because pressure around this everywhere from the same height is same so in this uh, small bottle i have taken water that is tap water so that we have added sodium chloride so now it is electrolyte into that we have also added metal phenolphthalein now to the cap of that we have inserted uh, two uh, conducting wires and we have connected two pin that is uh, electrical pin so two pin top will be there no from that we have taken and we have also connected one led that means when there is conductivity due to the ion movement we can see the glow of the bulb now i am going to insert that here and i will put the thread also so that it is now tight now let us see and we will give connection current connection i am going to give let me see what is going to happen i have a battery here so this is battery in this there are four cells 6 volt dc we are giving and uh, i am giving negative to one end this is red wire this is positive i am connecting here and negative which is black wire i am connecting here now you are seeing the glow of the 
bulb. So now the light, the light is removed. I think you can see still better. For a while we will remove. Now once again we will switch on. Now what is happening? Actually through the water that is sodium chloride solution or electrolyte there is conductivity. Okay. Now we are also seeing the color change in this one electrode which is connected to the negative. There sodium ions are moving and it is going to become sodium metal at that end and when it is sodium metal it reacts with the water which is free there, solution water is there. So there we are seeing the pink color change that means ions are moving that we can feel and if you also when you are doing in the home close observation if you are going to make you can see the bubble of a hydrogen which is coming up. So in this actually chemical reaction what is going to happen it is the electrolyte and the electrolysis is shown here. In the negative electrode actually sodium is coming and also hydrogen is coming. So on this side chlorine will be coming here. So when sodium is coming at this side you can feel the color change. So once again I will show here. So this side you are seeing the color change. Once again if I remove I think it is still better. So total color change will occur. Once again I will dissolve it. After some time if you are keeping once again in this thick electrode which is negative you are seeing the color change occurs. So this is the a simple uh, very in the simple way in very simple way we can show the electrolysis. Actually ions are moving here. So how we can feel that moment because of the color change in one of the electrode. So now let us see one more experiment. So which is also related to uh, electrolysis but here we are going to see which is strong uh, uh, and weak electrolyte that we are going to see for that we have made one the small arrangement so this arrangement is this here two electrode copper electrodes are there and it is connected to a bulb in series now in this I have uh, lemon water and in this I have tap water once again distilled water I have taken and I have taken HCl solution and also acetic acid. Like that different acids are there. So let me put that first maybe in the uh, citric acid solution. I am touching to the top of that. So glow you are seeing and you can also put to the down. So then also you will be seeing that means ions are moving between the electrode. Here AC current is given not DC. Okay, so you can also connect DC and C, but where you have to keep very small bulb. Now this is 220 volt bulb is kept. Now you have seen the globe of the bulb. Let us take the tap water which is also not uh, uh, pure and it has got certain ions that also glow here. So tap water, so it is also glowing because once again there are a lot of ions because of that conductivity is there. Let us take distilled water. In that how much it is glowing? Let us see. Distilled water is also not so pure. We are seeing little glow of the bulb. So filament is red here. So you can feel what is the change that we are seeing. Now once again I will change instead of distilled water. What I will do is I am going to take the phenom, uh, this one uh, acetic acid in that acetic acid is also it is actually weak acid because of that glow is also very low so it is almost compared to that of the distilled water the glow intensity you are seeing now what I will do is I will take again a acid hydrochloric acid dilute solution not the strong solution so there also you are showing the glow of the valve so bright that means only in the acetic acid the glow of the bulb is there that means it is weak acid and distilled water even though it is water there also we are seeing the glow of the bulb in a way but whereas in the citric acid or maybe if you are taking any other kind of water acid maybe you can also take tamarind solution and you can also take the juice of maybe uh, orange and all then you try. Now let us see 
uh, some equipment related to electromagnet. How to make electromagnet? We need enameled copper wire like this. It is a motor winding wire. All the children can go to the motor winding shop. You can ask them to give it because waste motor winding wire also we can take and any nail or maybe bolt or maybe if you are going to maybe building construction area there you will be getting 6, 6 mm rod or 12 mm rod something you can take now how to wind it over so it should be in the same direction so you have to wind it over so when you are giving current connection to a conductor around that conductor magnetic field is going to be generated this is actually altered experiment any current carrying conductor will have magnetic field around it and the direction of the magnetic field depends upon the direction of the current so that's why in order to test that what you have to do is dc only you have to use so that uh, direction we can change that positive negative polarity we can change and see now we have to wind like this i have shown winding till maybe somewhere round left over also you can go wind number of turns you can increase so that it can become a little stronger magnet now what after winding what you have to do is you have to remove the enamel on either side at the end maybe using maybe one blade or maybe uh, you have to burn and uh, uh, remove it or uh, that you have to do or maybe what you can do is every paper also you can take afterwards what you have to do you have to connect in by cell because we need current maybe single cell also you can connect now we have taken one uh, two cell which are connected here and now what i am going to do is i am connecting the terminal of the battery to the end of the winding which is made on the uh, wire so now the connection is over if you keep it for a longer time it is going to be heat up let us see if it is magnet then it should lift uh, at least one or two pin let us see, try whether it is lifting or not yeah this is uh, lifting one pin and maybe in the other end also it will uh, lift like that so if i want to increase the strength of the magnet what i have to do is I will increase the number of winding as is already made and kept on a bolt. So here more windings are there. Now I will give once again 3 volt. In order to increase the strength of the magnet, two ways are there. We have to increase the number of turns and we have to increase the voltage. So by doing so, it is possible to increase the strength of the magnet. Now this magnet, this is uh, actually it should lift some pins here you are seeing and this side also it is lifting on either side it will lift the pin and number of pins lifted on each side it will be same because pole strength of the magnet is same so it will become north and south and since it is dc is given the polarity is not changing so it is fixed in length so here uh, the principles of austed effect and also you can see the uh, ampere rule because direction is we are not changing now let me see i will connect maybe 9 volt battery so that more voltage is given the more current will be there when there is more current more magnetic field is going to be generated since it is winded on a bolt bolt also becomes magnet and it will uh, lift more pins so that means when the voltage is more and number of turns is more and the strength of the magnet is more when i remove the connection then these pins will fall down let us see i am removing the connection our uh, contact which is there made i am removing so that they fell down maybe some residual magnetism is there that's why one or two will be left over there now let us try maybe with the uh, we can also make horseshoe electromagnet. This is a bar magnet we have created earlier also with the nail we have made bar magnet. Now we can also make horseshoe magnet. We have to take 6 mm rod maybe from the building area. There you cut and ask them to bend and give it to you. And in your home you can connect maybe 
uh, one cell, two cell, three cell, or maybe nine volt cell, so that you can try of making more stronger and stronger magnet. Let me see how this works. Now I am keeping here because it will be having uh, now already connection is given. North and south will be there, so it will lift once again more number of pins. So this is electromagnet. Once again, if I remove the connection, so it will fall down. That means when the current is not there, this is not magnet. So now we have made uh, electromagnet. Uh, different kind of strength was there because the we have uh, increased the voltage to the nine volt or maybe three volt like that one point five volt. Now there is another. Uh, uh, electromagnet is made because number of windings are there. There is one rod here. I am connecting that to the nine volt. And let us see now how many pins it will lift and what else it can lift. Also, that we will see now. This end is lifting here all the pins, and other end what I will do is maybe I will put some more here. So it will also lift more and more heavy objects. So here, what all these which are actually magnetic material, it will lift. Maybe if we put maybe uh, some other pieces like uh, PVC material, plastic material, such things, it will not lift. Only it will lift the magnetic material. So I will remove these pins from here. Let me try. It will lift this. So like that, you can try different things also in your home. So you can make electromagnets of different strength. What you have to do? Windings you have to change and core may be same, there is no problem. So soft iron core or any nail or any such bolt you can use, you wind it over so that you can make stronger and stronger magnet. So cell nowadays it is easy, maybe in your home if there is a, a, a adapter that also you can take and try in order to give more uh, voltage. In the first experiment, we have shown uh, sodium we have put inside this uh, uh, water. Uh, uh, actually, the color change you have seen now, little color change at the top is existing still because it is dissolved already. Now, what I am going to do is I will put uh, maybe a lemon juice, little or any acid also we can put. I will put at the top here. Now, I will uh, stir it also. When you are stirring it, let us see, it is going to become colorless. Yes, now it is colorless because sodium hydroxide was there in the solution. I have put uh, lemon juice that is citric acid. Now what is there is sodium citrate has happened because after the chemical reaction, the sodium is reacting with citric acid, it has become sodium citrate. Now there is salt solution in this, that's why it is colorless. So you can make colored solution into the colorless because of the chemical reaction.